Hello. Hello. Hi. I always forget to click that I'm being recorded. I oh, mean, does it does it make do you have to just you have to just affirm that you know that? I can't unmute. Yes, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I do that. How are you? Well, happy Easter. Happy are Easter. You? How are you doing? How was your trip? Of How course. was Well, I'm I'm good, but you're the first uh Easterish uh, being <laughs> that I've encountered so far, though I haven't. I only went out for a short walk today. I'm I'm kind of on. I'm just. I feel good now. I'm I'm still jet lagged. For sure. But it, but it, it's okay. You know. Um, I'm taking it easy today. I go back to work tomorrow. So. Okay. Um, yeah. So how are you? What are I you doing there? Um, I'm not nothing too exciting. I just did a a we just did a a our annual Easter egg hunt with the dogs. I just fill them with dog treats. Uh, Karma the cat was also out there, but she kept finding yeah. dog treats because she's I, yeah I don't know. Um, but no, uh, that's about it. No, okay. I no, we'll definitely talk about Easter. I want to talk about more about Hong Kong though. I want to talk about how was the art fair. You mentioned the food. Um, yeah, I don't. Well, the I'd say. <laughs> From a qualitative point of view, I had better food than there was art at the art fair. But I mean, I, yes. Okay. Well, you sent me that the the. I mean, obviously, just a very very brief walkthrough, which I watched. It did not seem unlike the Seattle art fair in that I it seemed very colorful, which is not bad. I like colorful art, but seemed very sort of. Well, this does sound dismissive. I don't say Instagrammable, but it, I, art, I don't know. It seemed, now I didn't see a lot that would challenge me as a viewer. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, you, you, you got, you put your finger on it because it, it was, um, it, it was pretty much stuff. It, stuff, stuff that some people might want to buy. Mm -hmm. I, there was nothing challenging about it. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, apparently, and I didn't, I didn't know this until I, I had dinner with a artist friend. Um, uh, actually, the night I, the night, well, last night, last night. Mm -hmm. Anyway, and he told me that that the one work uh, which I didn't, I hadn't noticed, which was causing a huge stir. Hmm. Uh, lots of people were rushing. To look at it and photograph it, he said was a monstrously bad painting by Billie Eilish and and by uh, Billie Eilish. Yes, by. Oh. Oh, okay. No, right. no. Okay. No, I reject this wholeheartedly. And so, first of all, let me. Exp I'm sorry because they. Okay. I mean, well, well, you're an author, published author, so books in general, but really starting with children's books where every celebrity feels like they can write a children's book because it's only, you know, 150 words or whatever. And then so they get a really good illustrator and it becomes a New York Times bestseller. But there, some of these, are, okay, some of these are pretty, uh, pretty good. Julianne Moore did a whole series that involved her experiences growing up with freckles, and I think it's for redheaded children. I actually really like those. So it can be good. Some of the, you can be a good author and be a celebrity, obviously. But this whole thing where just like everyone's now an author or a children's author, and now, of course, okay, now you're an artist. She has a name. So she, but. Uh, well, Billy, Billy, Billy Eilish should have hired an illustrator. <laughs> <laughs> um. Huh. Apparently, I don't know. I shouldn't comment on it, but I because you didn't see it. But you, this is okay. Oh, but I, the, I, I'm, I'm pretty positive. I mean, there were, there were, there was a lot of stuff that was, a lot of stuff that was, I would say, uninteresting and very well made. And there's sure. a lot of stuff yep. that was uh, uninteresting and very badly made. <laughs> yep. Uh, um, but. Uh, yeah, I would say though my my takeaway. Yes. You know, if I pan back from the whole experience, the thing that I found the most interesting, even though this is an art fair, so there's one reason why everybody is there. At, at the same, but you know, public, a lot of people, public, local people, vaguely interested in art who like to dress up and go out. 
Um, but there were also, there were people coming from mainland China, from Taiwan, Singapore, the whole, the whole region. Yes. Yeah. 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 There, was of, there was a, 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 a Russian gallery owner huh. who introduced himself to me. We had a long chat and then he brought a group of Russian ladies around who he was huh. obviously kind of, so, so you have all of this. And I have I, I talk to people I know where they're from. Yes, from Shanghai. So no, no mention at all about um, China invading Taiwan. Right. No mention at all about Russia invading Ukraine. Right. No, even less mention zero about Palestine, Gaza, uh, right, right, and Israel. Yes. Um. I'm ultra aware of the fact that just two days before I leave, um, the New York Times is filled with an article, a, a story about Article Twenty Three. Yes, is a new rule. Okay, yes. so you no, know. No, this has I, been no, this has been in the news all week while you've been in Hong Kong. Yes, yes. Okay. yeah, yeah. yeah. So but you didn't more, get any sense. Of, I mean, obviously, people aren't going to be morning, talking about it. Well, the morning before I have a breakfast date. Yes, I've made weeks ago yes with a young woman who i met at the art fair ooh 2013 sure she just graduated from harvard she's lives in beijing i think parents have a home in london she's very plugged in she's very smart she's really in finance she likes art you know one day she'll buy a painting and we sit down at breakfast at the hotel and I say, you know, we chit chat and I say, well, do you think Article 23 is going to have an effect on the economy of Hong Kong? And she said, what's that? And I started to explain it as I was talking to her, she Googled it, right? And she, and she said, couldn't. Oh my, she said, oh, my God. Oh, no. Oh, OK, well, I'm surprised she could. But yeah, I, well, no, interesting. No, no, she could. No. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. You see, you see, <laughs> you see what's. I mean, what's on the ground in yeah. some places is not what's in the air or in the New York Times. I, I don't. Uh, I mean, right. I, no, no, no. I get that. And I, yeah, I had it. I had the I brought it up because I was being interviewed by uh, a reporter for the South China Morning Post, huh. which was usually I mean, he was saying, well, how's it going? Blah. blah. He was just doing a. A blurb piece, yes. right? <laughs> and I brought up Article Twenty Three, and he gets he just doesn't want to discuss it, right? I, I, no, I yeah, because it applies to this conversation. Right? Yeah, no, I yeah, I so yeah. So did, I did he just well, I I did think, he just I end the that, interview, or I mean, what did he do? What how did he react? Well, I don't know. Obviously, he did. I said, I guess if you print this, I'll have to leave tomorrow. <laughs> But, but Dad. I guess he didn't. I don't no, know. I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. But, but, but I mean, there is also, I mean, I think there are two takeaways for me. One is, you know, I have to remember that this is an art fair, not, not world politics fair, right? <sighs> On the one hand, but also, also, um, when I, I spoke to, the young woman who works for us in New York, who is from Taiwan, and she's more Chinese than she's not even American. She's Taiwanese. And um, she goes back and forwards. Um, and and I ask her, you know, do you think, do people in Taiwan think China, are they afraid that China is going to invade? Yes. He says, no, they know that that that's never going to happen. It's just a con it's it's a constant. Uh, uh, it's constantly being threatened by China for well political reasons. She said first of oh. all, she said first of all, there's only they it, they want they want Taiwan ideologically. They want the world to accept the fact that Taiwan. Yes, no, that Taiwan is China. Yes, no, as it is, it is now is yes. part of China. She said yes. if they bomb it, they don't have it anymore, so it's pointless, and they can't invade by the sea. It's just too difficult. It's huh. just difficult because you know Taiwan is very, very, very well defended. Yeah, 
to see. So she said it's all, you know, posturing. It's, it's all geopolitical. No, that's it's interesting. Political. And she said, no. She said, plus, you have to realize saying this to me that there are families, there are families that that live some in Hong Kong, some in mainland China, some in Taiwan, and they go back and forth. They're all, you know, they the people are related and they they consider themselves all Chinese. Yes. And so yes. Yes. We, we see that we see this as sliced up, but mm -hmm. they don't necessarily. Mm -hmm. In other words, uh, right. But no, I mean, well, again, I mean, I will. Well, again, I, yeah, I I would think about how even in our even in you know our press but international press would frame red versus blue states in a really in a way that doesn't acknowledge the fact that multiple companies do business in both and people commute and you know i mean all the all the reality there are probably a lot of people in those states who couldn't identify couldn't really who don't think about being in a purple state or a blue state or a red state the, no and who do or conscious they might but most people go about their business or right? who do but they go about their business anyway yeah no exactly and i think you know no i mean uh, yeah a, a a a perfect example was an article that was talking about you know uh you know one year after dobbs and and, and sort of this stark divide and the article to me really got it wrong because it was implying there was a divide between people in states with restrictive abortion policies and people in states without them but that's not the divide to me the divide to me is people who can afford health care, re reproductive care, regardless right. of what state they live in. Because if you yeah. live in a red state and you can afford to travel to another one and afford to take time off and all that, then you're still not restricted the way some, it's, it's still, it's always, it's, it's an economic, yeah, you know. If it's not, it's not, if you, if you're in that category, why do you even, you, why are you even reading about it? It's because it's not going to apply to you anyway. Right? Yeah. 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 So, um, but no, yeah. okay, back to, no, but okay, so back to Hong Kong Art Fair, I think, I mean, what you described, it's, you know, all the all the apolitical, that's not just because of where it is or any repression, I mean, I my, that's exactly my experience with the Seattle Art Fair as well, which I compared it to, that it's sort of unchallenging art that people might buy, it's, it's some of it technically good, some of it technically bad, but no one's, no one's presenting anything and no one's talking about anything that's going to not sell art i mean it's only about i mean i get and i guess that it's that's what an art fair is separate different from a from a even a gallery is willing to uh, put their you know put their name on the line put their for something that they think is interesting or worth it or and a museum obviously uh, often has a more public responsibility to present things that maybe aren't that that you know yeah. uh, well I, do they do or do not they also have board members so, and, and there's one new muse there's one museum. Well, there are two museums in Hong Kong. There's the Palace Museum, uh -huh. which is basically for Chinese historical Chinese art. Yes. And there's something called K eleven, which everybody has been talking about for years and years and years, which is new, which is uh designed by the Swiss Swiss team of Herzog and Muren, who did the Tate Modern, which I huh. think is hideous. <laughs> yeah, okay. Which is also hideous and it's huge, although it seems that at least five, five, no, yeah, at least half, more than half of it is devoted to empty public space um, uh, and cafeteria. And yeah, so the, which is normal for museums. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. That, that's not you. Uh, but it really does, it has. <clears throat> It has one major group of pictures, which were, which are all contemporary Chinese art. Some of it is interesting, but none of it is really challenging. And it all comes from the collection of a, a Swiss called Uli Sig, who, who started 40 years ago buying contemporary Chinese art. And he has a vast collection and he's very, very well connected to uh, the uh, museums in mainland China, uh -huh. and he's very well thought of by the mainland Chinese uh, um, authorities. Sure. And 
and he, and this gift of his to this museum has a lot of political ramifications sure. in, terms of, in terms of Beijing. In yeah. other words, it's 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 very it's very it's super kosher. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it, so th there there is an un, uh, an undercurrent. Oh, are you there? I'm here. No, I'm yeah, I'm here. Oh, I lost your visual. Wait. Okay. Somebody somebody called me. Um, Take I your time. I'm here. Uh, wait, I don't know what to do now. I can see me, but I can't see you. Um, Let me see what I should do. I've got the Zoom pages back. Maybe, let me just try. Is it, do you have a view or a just view in the upper right hand corner? I have view, yes. Yeah, and click on that and see if you could, gallery, speaker, is that go to. Mail calendar people now or something. Um. Oh, oh, now I can see you. Let me see if I can. I can see you. And okay, well, I can see you and me, but you're, we're in small squares. But that's okay. Fine. But as long as okay, I mean, yeah, uh, I'm here. Fine. Yeah, I'm here. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, sorry. What? What? what you were I... talking about? Well, no. And it's so it's you know super kosher with the government and and. Oh yeah. So so that's that. There is, you know, so you could say that that the ever since the handover ninety seven. Right. The Communist Party or the mainland authorities have been. Um, uh gr gradually taking over the culture cultural aspects and economic aspects and political aspects of hong kong right but that doesn't i think there's a certain degree of self um self censorship i, I saw mm -hmm. at the mm -hmm. start there, there was nothing um at all uh, I didn't, I didn't, I, there was nothing overtly political, right? Right. In other words, uh, 10 years ago, you might have seen images of Chairman Mao. Right. Or, no, where, know, yes. Yeah, yeah no. Not, not, not necessarily b being critical, but just right. incorporated into yes. yeah, pop, yeah. pop imagery, right? Yeah. Now, I don't see any, any of that yep. anymore. Um, and uh i didn't see anything that well you don't usually see any, any things that are really pornographic but you you see stuff that you know some artists that they're trying to be shocking a little know? racy yeah yeah, yeah. A racy. not really not very much of, less of that than i would expect at another art fair now i did talk to a friend of mine who's basically a conceptual artist mm -hmm. And he's 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 got a big exhibition that is going to be in two years at a um, at a major museum in mainland China. Yes. And he said that. And he's he is in a sense quite political, social, commentary. But yes. he said that his and but his work is never it's not it's not it's it it's. Uh, is subtle and he said it's going to be extremely subtle <laughs> <laughs> right, right right yes in other words he, he, he i mean he's he's never overt but he said you're going to have to dig deep to get the nuances of some of the pieces that that he's making and yeah. some people some people will get it and some people won't but it's not so overt that of course no yeah, yeah 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 and he's got to have obviously the a commitment of the curator of the museum to allow him to do this. Of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's unlikely that he'll get any censorship because it will be they won't they won't get it. Right. No, and that's yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, well, and that's what art so is that, always. That's always the case, I yeah. think, in oppressive societies. Yeah. Where you yeah, have yeah. artists or writers or poets who, who 
who who who embed it in their and that point across, but not yeah. not not broadly. So yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, um, I've got a low battery too. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> oh well, no, no it's, it's all right. It's okay. It's okay. I'm, I'm, yeah. The thing is that I'm plugged in. Right. Okay. Oh, okay. that that is weird. Well, I'm not plugged in. Okay, well, I'll worry about it later. Okay. Um, so, uh, yeah. You know, so, can I go to another topic? Absolutely, yeah. This, this, this I'm just... Um, there was an article in today's Times called Hollywood's New Fantasy, A Magical Colorblind Past. And it's basically looking at movies... Oh. Um, Willy yeah. Wonka, which I did see, and, the new one, uh, the the Hugh, the Hugh, the new one, the new one, yeah, the okay. new one. And how was it? Uh, I, I wasn't nearly as good as the I yeah movie with Gene Wilder. That's the um, that's the the benchmark and, still. And and, and um, uh, this this other a TV show. Uh, historical TV show about England, the Queen of England. They were Black Queen of England, but it's set in the Regency period. Right. Anyway, you're talking about um, movies or TV shows that um, that are set in a period, yep. right? A historical period that occurred that presents that period as being multiracial. Right. With, without, with, without that being at all part of the story, part, part of the plot. In other words, right? No. Uh, oh no! This is more and more common. Yes. I no no. I yes. know exactly what we're talking about. Um, how you did do. the t so how did I, I, I? I find it strange. I mean, I find it strange, but I can't. I haven't. You know, I'm not sure where I, whether I think it's good or bad. I mean, I okay. I, how what what was the Times article's slant on it? Oh well, it's written. It's written, but the slant was that this is, um, that that this is not a good. This is not not. It's not. It's presenting a sense of history that is completely fictitious. Right. And even though we're talking about fiction, it's right. one thing to have a current world or a future world, which right. one hopes would be, but but how can you avoid the fact, how, how, how can you have a, a black queen of England at a time when England was still making its money through slavery and- Right, no, no, well, no I, yeah, yeah, okay, I have a few, okay, I have a, okay. This is, a, I, I love this topic, but it's really, really complex, and it involves multiple things, including Hollywood, which is a business, Hollywood, which is art, culture, and race relations in America slash the world, all of which have their own complications. Um, where, to I be, where to begin on my take on this? One, I think it's interesting that right-wingers are the ones who are most rah rah outraged by it when it happens however i think and i don't know if the times article suggested this some articles have rightfully one of the real dangers is to present versions of history that implies things were equitable in ways that they were not that is a real yes, yes, that, yeah that is a yeah. real harm and danger um if people say if people start because regardless of what a history book says the images you see on you know the most viewed and most, uh, you know, whatever, Yellowstone or whatever. Um, my other, the other piece of this is Hollywood is an industry. Hollywood is an industry and a business and it operates on certain, I don't want to say cliches, but certain things. So they're going to keep making Westerns. They're going to keep making historical. They're going to keep making certain types of films. And if they are, either your argument can be these films need to remain whites only or remain white people and people of color only in subservient positions well then the argument to me is then you need to stop making these movies however again 
I care about not, I do care about race relations in the world, but I also care about Hollywood because that's a real business. All those costumers, all the historical researchers, all the people who put together a huge thing like a Western, all the lots, all those ranchers in Arizona who rely on certain amounts, and, and New Mexico, I'm sorry, I said, I don't know why I said Arizona, who, a state who I don't, but New Mexico, where they, you know, where they, there's a film, a legitimate film industry I still know people who work in, um, rely on a certain amount of Westerns being made. If those, if you say either it's a dichotomy of you can either not make those movies anymore or you must make them in a historically inaccurate way to uh, because it's unfair to only relegate certain people to certain roles. And, again, we're talking about employing huge swaths of people behind the scenes, but also the people on camera. So only certain people can play the leads. Only certain people... I mean, we're talking about equity across... Do you see the intersectionality of how it of, of yeah, yeah, no, and no. so some of those people behind the scenes, the costumers and historians and the people who do all that, those people are people of color too. So the ranch hands who are probably all Lat, Lat, Latinx. So if you're saying we, we're going to stop making westerns, you're they're going to lose jobs because of the acting equity of it. You know, so it gets very complex. And the final piece of it. Okay, here's my okay. Here's what what like you said. Your take, is it good or bad? I haven't decided. Um, I think when it has a compelling reason, we are telling the story in a retelling way. We're being very clear that we're not telling it a historically accurate way, but we're telling it in a way that is, I don't know, in the same way that you might do a black version of a Shakespeare play, knowing that it's an all-black cast, knowing that it's, not historically uh, accurate yeah. because it's we're doing it for a reason if you can do a compelling reason great um other than that then i think it still needs to be yeah no i'd i'd rather see the past historically accurate and more future forward imagery where we see p female black lesbian presidents and whatnot rather than make that in 1878 yeah. i i yeah so these are very good points um there is there was a uh, Agatha Christie uh, new movie that that I watched, which is um, in which the protagonist is um, an an African student in London who, for uh, for plot reasons, ends up in a small village in in you know in 1950 right. in in England and and apparently. <clears throat> Apparently, there's a the right wing conservative view in England was was outrage, right? Because this couldn't have happened, right? right? However, <laughs> they did it. They did give a good reason, right? In the plot, the plot had him arriving as a student at Oxford, which was plausible, right? Right. In other words, they created a plausibility. Now his 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 background, his color, his, his culture had nothing to do with his with with the plot or his character, but they did go they did go at the beginning to explain, mm -hmm. you wow. know, the, the, the right. plausibility of him being there. Right. Um, whereas whereas Willy Wonka or um, this this TV show that name I I didn't see it but not begotten or be, be I don't know that there is no if if one watched if 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 somebody watched it and and was ignorant of history right mm -hmm. or if if a child is watching it and this is how they get their history yes. Right? That's that's the problem I think I have. Yes. Yes. No. And I no. And I and I think that that's again. Even though the right wingers are the one who are most objecting to these right now, at some point they're going to turn out to be the ones defending it because they're going to understand how much it helps their cause of. It's always been great. I don't know what you're talking about. It's well, you know, it. Yes. No. And no. 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 Um. And okay. But here's the other thing. Okay. Back to we're going to continue to make historical dramas. Do they always have to be? Um, Eurocentric historical dramas can do they have to be cowboys and Indians or can they be told from a different perspective can they can you find those points in history where yes it may not obviously not a lot of 
I mean, I, I don't know when the first black student was admitted at Oxford, but I'm not, and I'm not saying you necessarily need to tell that story because that's a kind of white saviory story that's not even interesting. But you have a time period where there were outliers. There were people of color doing all sorts of interesting things in all sorts of, and, and you know, yeah, tell yeah, those stories. Yeah. None yeah. of those stories aren't told, and you can tell, uh, 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 you can retell the 1940s, 50s, so whatever era you want to do, but with centering different people who may not have been centered in society at the time, but they, but they, they still, they're interesting stories that haven't been told. So this guy says the magical multiracial past allows white viewers to watch white protagonists move through history without anyone having to think uncomfortable thoughts. That's just what you said. No, right. And you know, and when and when you tell these stories, you would include the adversity. You wouldn't pretend it was perfect for them and they were treated as equal. You the, the, I mean, but the, uh, but then again, uh, no, that all, yeah, it all gets complicated. Okay. He, he ends this. He ends yeah, okay. This, yep. Quote from James Baldwin. A great deal of one's energy is expended in reassuring white Americans that they do not see what they see. Right, no, <laughs> right. That right. they do not see what they see. Yeah. Um, um, and that actually goes to... As you say, it 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 helps the right wing, yep, create a myth that they won't. That according to you know Governor Ron DeSantis's great concern for the feelings of white people, you right, know, right, white people won't feel guilt, won't be made to feel guilty, right? I mean, and ever okay, every time they say that, and I have to do because again, this is what I do for a living. This is what I teach. I never, ever, and I can't speak for everyone who works in DEI because there are people out there who maybe are doing things that are trainings that aren't great and they can write, can definitely pull examples. But most of us who do this work for real know that guilting people or making people feel shame is not the goal. The goal is to activate people to be allies and to understand how historical imbalances continue to affect the present, but that's not, the purpose isn't to make anyone feel guilt or shame because there's actually a, a huge, a, 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 a immense amount of research that is attached to the work that we do that says that doesn't motivate people. That doesn't, when you say... It's also, I think, it's a, it's largely made up. I mean, the... I. I I mean, I don't think teaching history accurately to white and black students is going to make white students feel guilty. Right. It's no. going to make all students understand that this is the, the, that this country came about uh, with a lot of good and a lot of bad. Well, it, it will make like, them critical thinkers who who look at institutions uh, critically. But that's <laughs> ah, but that's the thing that. The, I contend that they're most afraid of, that more more so afraid of than even DEI or equity boogeyman. But okay, let's talk about, I want to go back to Wonka because yeah. the actual controversy at the time was that Hugh Grant, a, 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 a uh, I, I'm now, uh, yeah, again, I'm struggling with my words. So he's not a little person, but he took a part away from a, an actor which was traditionally a little person. So the first movie was a variety of people playing the Oompa Loompas. The second one was one person who was digitally created, and people already had feelings about that. Now it's, again, one person digitally created, and he's not even a little person, like, you know, so. Well, yes, but the original Oompa Loompas and I'm reading from this article, were described as pygmy people found in the deepest, darkest part of African jungle where no white man had ever been before. Yes. That's, that, that's the racism of... Uh, oh, well, oh no. Well, I mean, and Peter well, Pan... Oh. And, yeah, and, and Peter Pan has a whole confused... I mean, the, the, the racial slur is directed at black people, but the the characters are clearly indigenous to the America. I mean, yeah, no. So, I mean, it's, you know, take your pick on all of Disney's or all of the historical, the historical, 
Okay, but the new Snow White, also, they're not dwarves anymore. They're characters of different... And again, the right wing is go already going... First of all, Snow White's not white. Second of all, she's a, she's a Latinx actress. And the, the dwarves aren't dwarves, so... Oh my gosh, they've gone <laughs> awry. They've... Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I mean, I get it. I hear it. But I, when you put it that way, I mean, I hear it. I hear it. But also, it's uh, making the same movie again. That if you did that, then people would just complain about that too. And because you would, it would be outrageous. Because they're the same people. They're the they're the stuck mindset. They don't. Well, I uh, I don't know. Okay. Okay, I don't want. I didn't want to. Well, I don't know if we just have a few more minutes. So it is Easter. I mean, I grew up with Easter. We used to go to church, and not just on Easter and Christmas. I mean, we were year-round church people. Um, I grew up with Easter. Um, you may have heard. Have you heard that today is also Trans Day of Visibility? Is this? Yes, yes, I have. Okay, yes. it, Trans Visibility Day. Yeah, but this is and okay. I was going through my Instagram. I had neglected to look at my Instagram for two or three days and i was just informed that it's um it is and but it's not a new thing but because the president mentioned it um because okay. some you know the city of portland had an official proclamation so it's the right wing has a latched on oh i'm sorry not because because it happens to intersect with easter this year but again it's not a new thing and because it's over 15 years old it has absolutely intersected with easter to me, one of the things, okay, within our community, within the gender non-conforming community, one of the discussions is, is this date even labeled correctly? Because we're not invisible. We don't struggle with visibility. We are targeted <laughs> and attacked because we don't, because we stand out. So it's really not a, we don't want visibility. We want support and, and allyship and all that. And, um, but then when we get it, again, from the president, for instance, that just puts a bigger target on communities' backs, and so, you know, I mean, it's so it's 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 a double-edged sword. But yeah, you want you want support and you want acknowledgement, right? And uh, yeah, but that you can't have that without. I mean, would would you want the president to actively decide? Not to give you a shout out because it might put a, 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 a right. What I th no, but what I think is int here's well here's where it gets complicated. I think, and I can't. I don't know if this president or any other previous has acknowledged it. And if it was the first year, I don't think as the right wing is presenting it that the president chose it because it's Easter and to troll the right or to. As a again, Biden is Catholic and very proudly Catholic and goes to church. Um, I don't think for any of those reasons. I do think it's a both end that the president has chosen this year to take a line in the sand. Again, to me, most remarkably was Chris Christie taking that line in the sand on the Republican debate stage shortly before he dropped out. But while Vivek and and Nikki and Ron were just trying to like using trans people as a football just to like who can say the meanest, harshest, most misgendering thing but still get it on network television kind of thing, Chris Christie on that debate stage said, um, I believe that trans parents that parents of trans ki kids care about their kids and and are doing you know and know what's best for them which is a remarkable statement to make in that venue i think biden choosing this year i guess to me again i think it's a both and that i think there you know this this teenager uh, next benedict that it caused a lot of people to really focus on this in a really like oh wow we we need to protect these communities way um and which was i think the first time i heard biden mention uh any anything related to trans rights or anything um and it's it's again the more cynical view is it's an election year and so if the right is is saying anti-trans 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 it's just a talking point the same way that i don't want to say he's using reproductive rights but he's on the right side of history of reproductive rights and so yeah. why not talk it up so i you know i mean it's so 
I, I, I don't want to be used as a political football, but I, I again, I do I personally appreciate the president giving shout outs, and I think it is important in yeah. balance. But but I think both he and Chris Christie, I will bet you probably more Chris Christie are also saying that because they have had, they've got friends who are parents or friends who are, you know, that they, that there's, that there's some, there's some personal uh, uh, history there. Maybe, no, is, maybe, it, or, yeah, no, like, maybe, or good advisors or, well, no, I mean, yes. I think yeah. in this day and age, it's pretty, you can count on it, you know? Yeah, uh, well, and yet, I mean, many people, Dick Cheney has a lesbian daughter. Many people have those connections, but reject them or don't take that. Yeah, are they, are they, yes, exactly. But I think it, it yeah. yeah, I think it's both politically, they're doing it for political reasons and whatever, but they're doing I, I don't know. Uh, Chris Christie will not run on the third party. He, 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 he entertained it for a minute, but he said... I'm not. Uh, I'm not going to be a part of that. I don't. Anything that could possibly take anything away from. I'm not. Could that could make Trump win? I'm not going to be a part of that. Um, RFK. Any thoughts on that and his? Oh yes. Uh, oh, I have. Yes. <laughs> he's, a, he's a terrible. He's a terrible. I mean, he's just for so many reasons. He's a. He's a. Well, I mean, the whole family went. The whole Kennedy family went to line up with Biden, and and, yeah, and he's the a flagrant self. He's a narcissist. He's a he's a he's a nut job. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it, it yeah, it, yeah. Job. He's. I, I don't. Uh, I, I mean, I. I. I mean, I saw I saw some people being interviewed in, on TV, and 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 who were pro, pro him. And it seemed to me that either that was because they were virulent anti-vaxxers, yes. they were just, they were bedazzled by the Kennedy. They were still, they thought he was JFK or something. Which, I, which is, game. okay, well, so currently Cesar Chavez's family is suing him because he's using these political ads. His dad d did know uh, Cesar Chavez. It's possible, but that is not a connection. They're, they, they're absolutely are saying... Please take his name, his image off of any of your ads. He's nothing you stand for is what he stands for. But he does latch himself on to, regardless of his views, to very legacy beliefs. And I've seen exactly or heard on NPR exactly the same interviews where people are saying, well, like, I don't know too much about him, but he's a Kennedy. And I'm like, ah! Like, <laughs> uh, uh oh. Uh oh. I lost you. Yeah.